Rigor Kugler. Rigor Kugler, Romanian pronunciation, Rigor Kugler, Spanish Gregorio or Gregory Kugler, also known under the pen name of Panic, April 20 OS, April 7, 1903, September 30, 1972, was a Romanian avant garde short story writer, poet, and humorist. Also noted as a graphic artist, composer, and violinist, he was a decorated World War I veteran who served as the Romanian Kingdom's diplomatic representative in various countries before and after World War Roman II. The nephew of poet Matilda Kugler Pony, he was the author of unconventional and often irreverentious pieces, which have drawn parallels with the work of Alfred Jarry and Irmas. Their author was celebrated by some of his generation colleagues for his independent voice in Romanian literature. An anti-communist, Kugler renounced his post in 1947, just before the establishment of a communist regime, and lived the final decades of his life in Peru. Promoted by the Romanian diaspora, but largely ignored at home, until the Romanian Revolution of 1989, he became the subject of interest in post-communist literary criticism. Biography Early Life and Family On his paternal side, Kugler descended from an ethnic German family of Austrian nobility. His ancestor Maximilian von Kugler, 1790-1868, was a Habsburg, civil servant and lawyer who moved to Moldavia to serve for the Prince Mihail Sturza. Members of the family had settled in Moldavia by the middle of the 19th century, and his great-grandfather Karl von Kugler, later known as Karl von Kugler, was employed as urban planner in Iasi and became a naturalized Romanian citizen. His daughter and Gregor's aunt, Matilda, was a noted poet who associated with the literary society Junimia and whose second husband was chemist Peter Pony. Born in Rosnov, Nemt County, Kugler was the son of Grigor Kugler and his wife Anna, daughter of universal journalist Nicolae Tincu. He was also the cousin of art critic Petru Comarnescu. Kugler graduated from the Romanian Army's College at Dilu Monastery. Later, speaking of himself in the third person, he recalled with irony that his graduation pleases him to this day. He served in the World War I Romanian campaign, was injured, and had his two fingers from his left hand amputated. In his own recollections, he spoke of his own involvement in the war as a promenade and indicated that the medals he received after being wounded in November 1916 were owed to him not taking cover in time while defending Pipes D train station against the Central Powers forces. He was subsequently present in Moldavia, the only region held by the Romanian authorities after the Central Powers occupied southern Romania. He referred to this period in his life as dieting, alluding to the hardships of war, and indicating that this judgment also applied to occupied Bucharest. Interwar Literature and Diplomatic Service In 1918, Kugler moved to Bucharest, where he studied at the university's Faculty of Law and the Music Conservatory. His teachers at the latter institution were celebrated musicians, such as George Enescu, who reportedly held Kugler in high esteem, Alphonse Castaldi, and Mihail Jora, the composer of several waltzes and leader. Kugler won the Enescu Award for Musical Creativity in 1926. After 1927, he was assigned to a succession of diplomatic posts in Sweden, Switzerland, Germany, Denmark, and ultimately Norway. According to literary critic Florin Manolsku, he also represented Romania in Bratislava, at the time part of Czechoslovakia. While in Stockholm, he met Ulla Gerda Lizinka Matilda Diasen, also known as Ulrike or Ulrika Diasen, daughter of a Swedish diplomat and granddaughter of a Swedish Navy commander, and, in 1937, married her in Bucharest. In 1933-1934, he debuted as a writer with a series of unusual sketch stories, poems and aphorisms, all of which were first published in the magazine Vierania. It is, however, probable that his earliest literary experiments were published by his cousin Petru Komarnescu in the magazine Tiparnita Literar around 1927-1928. Also in 1934, he completed and printed his first volume, 
titled Apunake see Alt Phenomene Apunake and Other Phenomenons. The writing was illustrated with his own drawings which he himself fancied as a means to cause unease to his readers. A subject of interest in the literary community, it generated a following among young intellectuals, some of whom titled themselves Apunakisti Apunakists, while Cudler himself became confounded with his character and came to bear his name. In 1946, he issued another volume of his works, named by El Prisant P. Tiva Meat, Tiva Tiva being the Romanian for pipe. Rigor Cudler was opposed to the Romanian Communist Party's takeover of the country, effected in successive stages after World War Roman II see Communist Romania. In late 1947, just after the Communist Anna Pocher took over as foreign minister, he decided to resign his diplomatic position, motivating his gesture. In a letter to Pocher as the consequence of the new orientation in Romanian government policies, which part with my convictions and sentiments, Manolscu argued that the choice of words was in contrast with the usual perception of their author as trifling. Reportedly, Cugler's action caused consternation in Bucharest, where no one had yet attempted to confront Anna Pocher using such terms. He himself spoke of his departure as an unlimited vacation, and, shortly before leaving, handed down copies of his texts for Viramia to his friend Petru Dumitrascu. Exile and final years. Together with his family, Cugler settled in Peru's capital, Lima. Reportedly, he picked his place of exile by randomly setting his finger on a spinning globe. He found a job as an insurance agent by day, indulging his musical passion in the evening as a violin soloist for the Lima Philharmonic Orchestra. In November 1956, Peruvian Minister of Education George Bassetter appointed Cugler to a government commission supervising the activity of state-financed educational institutions in the field of music, the Commission for the Study of Musical Co. 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 Musical Co. 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 While in exile, Kulger also issued his final volume, Afara de Unu Singer, also spelled Afara de Unul Singer, both titles translating as Out on One's Own, which he issued as a Samizdat. According to its author, the book had an earlier linotype edition which had been printed in Bucharest before his departure. He defined this earlier volume as discreet, elegant, but without a watch on its wrist and blowing even in yogurt, in reference to the Romanian proverb he who was once burned by soup will even blow to cool yogurt. Late in his life he completed various literary pieces, such as a mock fairy tale in cackling style, and the texts amenteri din capillary memories of childhood. Many of these writings were also illustrated in his own hand, which he amusedly defined as a worrying aspect. Cugler maintained contacts with intellectuals of the Romanian diaspora, several of whom were reportedly fascinated by his work and character. Early on, he joined the Romanian National Committee, created by former Premier Nicolae Radescu, as a member of the anti-communist and American-based Assembly of Captive European Nations, serving as its representative in the Peruvian capital. He was visited in Lima by poet Nicolae Petra, as well as by literary promoters Stefan Basiu and Mircea Popescu, both of whom edited literary magazines for the community of exiles. The former two left memoirs on the period, in which they evidenced that Kugler was pining for his native Romania and that Romanian culture was dominant in his house. In 1968, he was interviewed for Radio Free Europe by prominent Romanian journalist Monica Lovinescu. Work Main Characteristics and the Aponic Theme Kugler wrote his work in Romanian, French, and Spanish. In all, he was fluent in eight languages, including dialects of Arabic. An original writer, defined by literary historian Paul Cernat as eccentric. Kugler was not affiliated with any of the avant-garde trends. His work is often thought to have, at least in part, owed inspiration to Ermaz, a solitary avant-gardist of early 20th century Romanian literature. However, Manolscu indicates, he made a point of not joining any modernist trend. 
He never read Ermos's stories, but was probably familiar with works by the rebellious French author Alfred Jarry, and his work showed connections with Jarry's pataphysics. In one of his stories, titled Super Bardal, the Super Bard, Kugler mocked surrealism and its automatist techniques, depicting an imaginary writer who writes nonsensical syllables on strips of paper which he glues to all sorts of objects, and which he later assembles on a silvery string. It has also been suggested that his personal style bears likeness to a variety of later works, and that it shares traits with the absurdist plays of Eugene Ionesco. Comparisons have also been made between Kugler and another absurdist playwright, Samuel Beckett, as well as between him and pessimistic Romanian philosopher Emil Sioran. Other writers whose work was argued to be similar with Kugler's include Christian Morgenstern, Lewis Carroll, and Daniel Carms. Manolsku describes Kugler's literature as dominated by a way of being opposed to routine, to ankylosing academism, to Kassern mentality, and in general, to all of our Pavlovian customs, while literary historian Alexandru Ruja sees his style and outlook as the imponderability of writing. Kugler spoke of his own debut in literature as, I started to pick on everybody. Manolsku proposed that the writer's perspective on life was structuralist, and that it displayed an intelligence blessed with an enormous associative capacity in respect to the most diverse patterns, identified as if in jest, Florin Manolsku noted that these traits were present in the names he picked for his characters, objects, and the imaginary places they are to be found in. He proceeded to define such methods as literary pantography. A panic which centered on an eponymous character was largely an allegory of Kugler, as he himself was to indicate in his later writings. In Manolsku's assessment, it is partly based on themes in Greek literature, owing inspiration to its popular novels, and constitutes a Jerry-like parody of science fiction and technicist subjects. Alexandru Ruja notes that the story disturbs fictional conventions from the very start by mixing in the impression of hanging on to a reality subject to the corrosive effect of irony. The piece debuts with the words, by the end of the trail through the nine thousand bells stood a windmill. It was there that Apunek and Kemeti experienced their first moments of love. To this day one can see the walls scratched from the inside by Kemeti's fingernails, and on the doorstep may still read two lines she wrote during one night of passion, more specifically two Alexander. In one of the episodes while visiting a forest, a panic is turned into a rubber ball at the hands of a wizard called Sportle, the sport, which allows him to witness how an old woman is pumped up with air in order to become a champion of free flight. Eventually reunited with his wife, the character fathers a monstrous child, who reaches enormous proportions, and, in what is a reversal of happy end conventionalism, defecates on the entire audience. Other writings, like a panic, his other works constituted attacks on literary and social conventions. In his sketch story Match Null Match Ending in a Draw, Kugler depicted a boxing competition in which four people take part, having for its referee a conferencing hedge duck and ending in cordiality. The series on cookbooks eponymously titled Carte de Bucate sees Kugler advising on how to prepare items such as Parisian mountain oysters, which involves the cook singing romances to the ingredients or plumpy breasts, and tongue a la princess. Recipes may turn to off-topic statements, as is the case for the text recommending the mountain oysters. At the moment she rose from the divan, and I saw her disheveled hair reaching below her midsection, like a white silk cloak, but, whatever, why talk about it, these are things that one needs to see, not read about, I have decided, without any more doubt, in favor of short curly hair. This characteristic, Manolsku notes, was an illustration of the writer's technique as subtly outlined in the cookbook's preface. The hardest thing when one writes a cookbook is not to stray away from the topic. Other prose fragments include Florica, which takes the shape of two telephone conversations between the author and a woman named Florica Diakonscu, who shares her strange visions and the false biography of a non-existing poet named Haralem Olaru. Among his poems is the Spanish-language Dos Hermanas Two Sisters, 
about two women falling in love with the same man and deciding not to fight over him for lack of bullets, and the assonant French language cattle, El Emule de Maman Catalis, the emulator of my mule which ends with the death of a suitcase. A Romanian language piece, titled Cantec de Ligue in Lullaby, reads, Ruja argued that there was an intrinsic connection between Kugler's training as a musician and the pleasant sound of his lyrics. This, he proposed, was the case of pieces where the absurd was reached through the alteration of regular meanings, but where the text was nonetheless arranged with intent. One of them read, Legacy Kugler's literary work was traditionally ignored at home and abroad, a fact which Florin Manolsku attributes to the perception that he was merely a dabbler. Also, according to Manolsku, the author found it hard to fit in the framework of his adoptive Latin American literature. The tendency to reject Kugler's writings began early, as Manolsku noted. He was not reviewed at all in George Kalinescu's History of Romanian Literature, which first saw print in 1941. Overall, Paul Cernet concluded, no work of literary criticism published during the interwar period ever mentioned his apony. In communist Romania, he was almost never publicly mentioned. One exception to this rule is a fugitive 1983 note written by critic Constantin Siaprago, who simply described Kugler as one of Irma's epigons and argued that he lacked Irma's concision. In 1969, at a time when the Nicolae Sosescu regime offered a degree of liberalization, surrealist writer Sasapana included Grigor Kugler in his anthology of Romanian avant-garde texts. He was not, however, present in similar collections, including the one edited by Ovid Kromel Naisanu. This tendency, while officially rejected, the writer was reportedly earning status in counterculture and among dissidents. Novelist and anti-communist activist Paul Gomer recounted that deportees to the Barragan learned his texts by heart. Similarly, the Romanian diaspora was instrumental in preserving his legacy, beginning with 1950 reprints of his works in various exile magazines. Many of his literary pieces, which he himself had gathered in a dossier, survived after being copied by Stefan Basiu, who kept his version at his residence in Honolulu and published excerpts from it in Meal, the journal of which he was editor. A posthumous 1975 edition of Vi El Prison P. Tiva, with one of Kugler's autobiographical essays, was printed in Madrid, Spain, at the expense of Nicoli Petra, and illustrated with the author's own drawings. Alongside the Lovinescu interview broadcast in 1972, he was the subject of a series of shows aired by BBC Romanian Edition, first aired in February 1966, and titled De la Panex Satire, Readings from a Punny. A Panex work was rediscovered at home after the Revolution of 1989. During the 1990s, the author became the subject of academic studies and had his work included in several anthologies. At the same time, he earned a small but dedicated following among the younger local writers. The Jimbolia-based Apunic Literary Club was established in his honor during 2003. In 2006, Kugler's writings were printed in a German-language edition, compiled by Romanian-born academic Horst Fassel on the basis of texts preserved by linguist Eugenio Cozirio entitled Apunic, Ein Anderwelt Apunic, Another World. Kugler's works were printed in various editions by several publishing houses, beginning with a 1996 edition of his Apunic and a 1998 reprint of a Faraday New Singer in Manuscriptum magazine. In 2007, it was announced that director Alexandru Tasalscu was preparing a dramatization of Apunic to be produced by the Comedy Theater in Bucharest. In his adoptive Peru, Kugler was also progressively acknowledged as a writer and musician. In 1978, six years after his death, the magazine cared his allocated space to an article outlining his career. On March 23, 2002, the cultural center of the Pontificia Universidad Católica del Peru in Lima hosted a concert dedicated to his memory. Gregor Kugler and Ulla Diasen had three daughters together, Christina, born in Stockholm, Margaret, 
born in Oslo, and Alexandra, born in Lima. When his children were growing up, he jokingly nicknamed his first and second born respectively, Este Romanian for this one and A that one. 